Good afternoon, and thank you, Dr. Sufflu, for the introduction. Dr. Champagne has already set the stage for why we need to study blueberries. So today, I will go further into details about blueberries and diabetes prevention. So what exactly does diabetes prevention mean to you? Well, to this blueberry man, diabetes prevention means attacking diabetes and doing whatever it takes to defeat diabetes. This is an outline of my presentation. I will briefly discuss diabetes, dietary supplements, and blueberries. And lastly, I'll, give, I'll present the results of our blueberry study that was conducted here at Pennington. As Dr. Cephalou has already mentioned, there is, an there is a diabetes epidemic, and looking at the map of the United States, the darker the color, the greater the percentage of diabetes. And as you can see, obesity follows the same trend as diabetes. One of the alarming questions is, when will the United States become all red? Some of the interventions that are used to delay the progression to type 2 diabetes are diet modification, physical activity, medication, and the one that I'm going to focus on today is complementary and alternative medicines. These medicines use a wide range of different approaches to treat and prevent certain diseases. However, there is little proof on the safety and the health effect of these complementary and alternative medications. The complementary medications, they're the ones that are used along with the medications that are prescribed from your doctor. The alternative medications are those that are used instead of the medication prescribed from your doctor. There are several reasons why people decide to take this approach. Some may be that they want to eliminate the side effects that are from the different drugs that are prescribed by your doctor, or it can be just the need to want your own, want the, your own control over your own health. Here, is a, here are the 10 most common complementary and alternative medications. And the most popular one, the one that I'm going to focus on today, are the non-vitamin, non-mineral, and natural products. They are also referred to as botanical dietary supplements. They are a plant or plant part dietary supplement valued for its medicinal or therapeutic properties, flavor, and or scent. And the definition of a dietary supplement, it is intended to supplement the diet. It contains one or more dietary ingredient, ingredients. It is intended to be taken by mouth as a pill, capsule, tablet, or liquid, and it is labeled on the front panel as being a dietary supplement. Here is a list of common names that, can, that are used to refer to products that are made from botanicals. The most obvious one is labeled as botanical products, and then other names are herbal products and phytomedicines. In 2007, the out-of-pocket cost for complementary and alternative medicines was approximately $33.9 billion. 35.2% of this cost was from visits to doctors that specialize in complementary and alternative medicine. And nearly half of the percentage of the total cost was from those individuals that purchased botanical and dietary supplements. So you can see that there is an increased interest in this area, and there needs to be more research on the safety and health effects of different botanical dietary supplements. There are many botanical dietary supplements that I could discuss today, but I'm going to just focus on a specific um, botanical dietary supplement called blueberries. The U.S. blueberry consumption per person has increased over the last 10 years, from 1997 to 2007. And this is approximately a 70% increase. And this increase has been due to 
the increased interest in blueberries and the health benefits that come from blueberries. I don't know if you've noticed in the grocery stores, but blueberries are everywhere. They can be found in the cereals, in your waffles. They can be found in Pop-Tarts, even in baby food. They can be found in trail mix and different juices. They also have chocolate-covered blueberries. <laughs> so blueberries provide many different health effects for different condi conditions and diseases, such as heart, vision, cancer. And the one I'm going to focus on today is diabetes. Um, Dr. Champagne already went over the antioxidant effect. So blueberries have a high antioxidant effect. And antioxidants, again, they help protect body cells from becoming damaged and causing other um, harmful diseases. Dr. Cephalou has already gone over many of these definitions. So I'm just going to review them again, just as um, a reminder. Glucose, or blood sugar, is a sugar in the blood that is used for energy. Insulin is a hormone that controls the amount of glucose in the blood, and it's also produced from the pancreas. Insulin sensitivity. Insulin sufficiently moves glucose from the bloodstream to the cells in the body. Cells inside the body respond to the action of insulin. And insulin resistance is the opposite of insulin sensitivity. Insulin has difficulty moving glucose from the bloodstream to the cells in the body. So cells inside the cell do not fully respond to the action of insulin. So now I'm just going to demonstrate what insulin sensitivity looks like inside the body and what insulin resistance looks like inside the body. You have your pancreas and you have a cell. There are many cells, but I'm just going to focus on one. So in insulin, when, in insulin sensitivity, whenever you consume a high sugar content, such as we'll pick ice cream, you have glucose that builds up in the bloodstream. Pancreas produces insulin. This moves the glucose into the cell. Now the cell can use the glucose for energy. So the cells inside the body can respond to this action um, of insulin. However, when a person is insulin resistant, the cells inside the body do not fully respond to the action of insulin. And eventually, this leads to a collection of glucose in the bloodstream and um, later lead to diabetes, which you will see elevated glucose. For many years in Canada, Blueberries have been used as a treatment for diabetes. And also in previous literature, diabetes has, we have seen um, many health effects for blueberries, such as reducing blood glucose, increasing glucose uptake into the cells, and also a protection from obesity. And I would like to note that most of these studies were done in animals and cell culture. So there's a great need for more human research. So today the question is, can blueberries improve prediabetes and prevent diabetes in humans? So we're looking at prediabetes, a prevention. The objective of the study was to evaluate the effect of blueberries on improving the ability of insulin to work in prediabetic individuals. And the hypothesis was that dietary supplementation with blueberry smoothies will result in an increase in the ability of insulin to work in prediabetic individuals. This is our study design. We had three screenings. And during our fourth visit, the visits are found along the bottom. So at the fourth visit, we term this our baseline. The participant had an insulin sensitivity test. And after this test, if those individuals were pre-diabetic, then they continue in the study. And, the, and those that were pre-diabetic, they were randomized at this visit to consume a placebo smoothie or a blueberry smoothie. And they consumed this for six weeks. 
And at the end of the study, there was also another insulin sensitivity test. The insulin sensitivity test measured the ability of insulin to move glucose from the bloodstream to the cells. And so what we really were looking for is an improvement in your ability of insulin to work from the beginning of the study to the end of the study, which was six weeks of consuming either the blueberry or the placebo. This is just more details of the study design. This is a list of our different parameters. We looked at blood pressure, um, did a physical heart function exam, and also we did many different nutritional assessments. The one I'd like to point out, we did collect their um, food records for three days, and also they picked up their smoothies every day. This is looking at the nutritional value of the smoothies. As you can see, the energy is actually the calories. The blueberry and the placebo smoothie actually contain um, very similar calories, approximately 240. And this is just looking at 16 ounces. And the participants actually had to consume two of these. So they had a total of 32 ounces a day of either the blueberry or placebo smoothie. The blueberries that were provided in the smoothie, just looking at the blueberry group, the um, 240 calories, the blueberries provided 80 calories. And they also contain other vitamins and minerals. I also like to note that the dietitian counseled these individuals to remove 500 calories from their diet so that they could replace the 32 ounces of smoothie because we did not want them to gain weight. We, want them to, we wanted them to maintain their weight. So here's just a picture of our smoothie. This smoothie, we're looking at the blueberry smoothie. This is the 16 ounce. It contained the blueberries and the other uh, major ingredient was the yogurt. And then we had our placebo smoothie. And as you can see, it looks exactly like the blueberry smoothie. Um, what we added was food coloring and flavor so that we cannot tell the difference between the blueberry and placebo smoothie. Looking at the characteristics of the study participants, we evaluated African Americans and Caucasian, male and female, and also their age, body weight, BMI, and body fat was very similar between the blueberry and placebo group. Their age, they were um, both groups were middle-aged individuals. Their body weight was approximately 100 kilograms. Their BMI, everyone was overweight or obese, and their body fat percent was approximately 40%. So now we're going to move to the, um, one of our most significant outcomes. We're looking at all of the participants in the study, and this is looking at their ability of insulin to work from the beginning of the study to the end. So looking at the blueberry group first, these are all 15 participants that are at the bottom. And as you can see, that majority of these participants improved their ability of insulin to work. And when you compare this to the placebo group, again, all of the participants of the placebo group are at the bottom. You can see that looking at um, those people that have greater than a 10% change that the blueberry group has a higher amount of people that improve their ability of insulin to work. Of course, we would have liked everyone in the blueberry group to have improved their insulin um, sensitivity, but, as, but um, when you're dealing with human research, it's very individualized, and you always have those that we term as non-responders to treatments. And then also in the placebo group, you do, you do see a couple people that improved, even though they did not consume any blueberries. And this is an unknown factor as to why they improved. Um, again, these are humans. We did not follow them um, every hour of the day. So once they leave Pennington, we have no idea what they consume um, once they leave Pennington. So looking at the groups on average, so what we did, looking just at the blueberry group first, we combined all 15 participants and we looked at the average. The average is 22.2%, and looking at the placebo group, 
it was 4.9%. And you can see that the blueberry group has a five times greater improvement in their ability of insulin to work. Looking at other parameters that we measured, consuming blueberries did not affect food intake, body weight, and, and their percentage of body fat. This is actually a good thing. We wanted these parameters to remain constant because if they change, this could, this could have affected our outcome. So in conclusion, blueberry smoothies improve the ability of insulin to work in pre-diabetic individuals and the blueberry smoothie did not affect body weight and energy intake. So, we actually need your help today. We are going to have a second blueberry study, and this time we're going to evaluate blueberries and their effect on high blood pressure and heart health. We will, we will actually start recruiting for this study relatively soon, so Hopefully, all of you individuals in here, I will see you again. For more information about blueberries, I provided two websites, and the second one is our local website. And also, I provided some websites um, of general nutrition information. They also will provide some information about blueberries. So I would like to just say thank you. And... Okay, I'll wait for him to open it up for questions.